Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-108. Our previous episode featured the party arriving at Nako Keep for the Independence Day celebration, which was in full swing. Within the safety of the outer courtyard walls, the group split up in different directions. Sister Elaine, being the sole holdout, she too was soon removed from the adventurer's tent for a meeting with Lord Nako himself. The cleric was identified and did not dispute her identity, hoping that it wouldn't work against her. We rejoin her with the Lord of the Manor. Please, sit. Make yourself comfortable, my dear. You are among friends, advised the old knight as he struggled with the ceremonial armor. A steward arrived, bearing a platter of cheese and wine, and offered her a wide array of choices. She took a small goblet and two pieces of cheese before returning her gaze to the elder knight who was clearly becoming upset. The regional authority shooed away his personal squire who had attempted to help the man with the polished but unwieldy armor. Sister Elaine set down her food and drink and rose to help the man who initially bristled at the attention but quickly softened as the reverend daughter moved a troublesome buckle out of the way. After assisting in the repositioning of the armor, Lord Nego thanked her and inquired as to where she learned the finer arts of ceremonial armor. The priestess smiled coyly and pointed out that her pursuit of arms gave her a vast knowledge of armor, especially ceremonial. As my lord is certainly aware, the church relishes the opportunity to put on the grandest attire during celebrations, no matter how useless the armor is. A smile broke over the man's face as he nodded and waved her back to the table. The steward returned to give the lord of the manor a few morsels and a much larger goblet of wine. Begging your lordship's pardon, but, well, why have I been summoned? inquired the young woman. The old knight guffawed at her brashness and signaled to his squire, who rushed over and presented a slender piece of paper and handed it to her. She took the item hesitantly, but read it quickly. A look of shock crossed her face as she inquired as to when the missive had arrived. Lord Nako struggled with the retention of the shiny armor and explained that it arrived last week. He confirmed that he had read it, but did not understand it. I was given the message that arrived by an owl. A secondary note had pointed out that you may be headed our way. It is rare that we get any missives from the church, my dear. The old knight rose and struggled against the uncomfortable tire and continued. From the message, clearly you and your associates have run into some kind of trouble with the syndicate, but that is all I can divine from the message. Blast this armor! Just get me my normal armor. I can't wear this crap, bellowed the warrior. The squire made a hasty exit as Lord Nako stripped off the shiny armor and tossed it to one side with a clatter. He apologized to Sister Elaine for the outburst, but added that it was very taunt and he preferred his own. He waved to the steward who immediately refilled the goblet and brought an array of food which he began to inhale, causing the young woman to chuckle. Lord Nako explained that he and the High Bishop have known each other for several years, back when he was a young cleric like yourself. He went on to explain that if Sister Elaine and her party were friends of the High Bishop, then they were friends of his. The cleric read the note again and seemed perplexed about it. The Lord noticed her concern and inquired if there was anything he could assist her with. She bit her lip, but shook her head to the negative just as the squire and another assistant brought out some well-worn armor. Nako smacked his thighs and downed his goblet of wine before standing up to receive his attire. The dull gray battle armor had several scratches and rents on it, clearly showing heavy usage. 
As the two attendants began to strap the armor on, it was evidence that there was no sizing problems. He pointed out that he and several of his warriors were about to perform a show about the battle that won the independence, and she was certainly welcome to attend or not. He added that a chamber had been made up for her in the high tower in the event that she had arrived. The pit in her stomach at the news had her decline the invitation and head out to the celebration without him. She gratefully accepted the chamber in the tower and headed that way. The wine steward was ordered to show her to the quarters and provide her with whatever she needed. She bowed deeply and thanked the knight just as a group of men arrived clad in brightly polished armor. The men appeared uncomfortable that their leader was not adorned in similar attire, but all chuckled as Lord Nacko told them they all looked pretty. With a wink, the elder knight stomped off to the courtyard to perform the mock battle. The wine steward relaxed as the lord of the manor left, but still appeared nervous. With the room emptied, Sister Elaine noticed the man's apprehension and pointed out that perhaps he should have a drink. He smiled and quickly quaffed a long pull from the bottle and thanked her profusely. "'Would you like to see your quarters now, milady?" asked the man. Sister Elaine nodded and was summarily taken up to the third floor of one of the towers to a very large room with an expansive view of the outer courtyard and the surrounding land. The moon was full and spread a nice glow over the Katorian Bay. Looking down, she observed the reenactment taking place, but then noticed bright lights in the north. Colorful illuminations rose over what she believed was Haddonfield, and she was amazed at the color and pageantry. After several minutes of watching the festivities, she moved to the large feather bed and reread the missive. My dear Elaine, it distresses me to give you bad news. But I must inform you that our friend Dingus Overmeyer has been arrested and our attempt to wrangle the price from your head is failing. I hope this warning finds you safe and you remain so. Lord High Bishop of Phoenix Meanwhile, back in the outer courtyard, Fargus Stoutheart and Bulger, the former sailor, located a pair of stools next to one of the ale wagons. The chairs had been occupied by the purveyors of the liquid, but they had moved out to watch the mock battle that had just begun. A leith elven woman arrived with her hands on her hips at the sight of the two men downing liquor directly from the spout. <sighs> Didn't I warn you two about that behavior before? asked the mage. Spilled ale skittered off the gnome's beard as he shook his head negatively. The ranger spoke up and pointed out that she had warned him but not Bulger. Shaking her head, Lady Irena threw up her hands and headed off to the adventurer's tent. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening. <laughs>